Okay, today I want to talk to you about this great new products that have been out. Everybody's talking about the weight loss injection, semiglutide, Wagovi, and Rozempic. They're great. Uh, our providers in the clinic, you know, write the prescriptions all the time for patients, and they're losing weight. Um, you know, for those, most patients can take it. I'm one of those. I talk about in another video. I can't take it um, because it, the side effects are too great for me. But for most patients, they can, and our average, you know, our patients are losing more weight than what you're seeing in the study, so it's working awesome. But if you don't do something, if you don't have a plan in place for when you stop taking the medication, you're going to have all that weight come back. Uh, there's a study that just came out. I just pulled it up this morning, and what they found in the study with uh, semaglutide is that one year after the patient stopped taking the subcutaneous semaglutide, that they put back on two thirds of their weight and their metabolic syndrome, their type two diabetes or prediabetes returned. Now, first of all, let me say this, this is not medical advice. This is for educational purposes only. You need to seek the, the advice of your own physician. So why did that happen? Well, you guys have seen it all before. I have. I've had a yo-yo dieting where you lose the weight and put it back on, lose the weight and put it back on. And there's two reasons for that. And this is no different. The only difference is, is this is a medication that suppresses your appetite. So you're not hungry. You don't have the cravings. And what does that lead to? It leads to natural calorie restriction, even unintentionally. So why do these people have the yo-yo effect, including even those in this study? There's two reasons for that. One is when they're, they don't make it, their lifestyle change is permanent. So even on this medication, if you don't change your daily nutritional habits and have a plan in place for when you get off of it, you're gonna put that weight back on. So you've got to have a plan in place when it comes to nutrition. This is how many calories I'm gonna eat a day. This is what I'm gonna eat a day. And this is what I can do for a lifetime. So you gotta have that plan in place. And if you don't, when all those cravings come back and that hunger comes back, and you haven't changed what you're eating, your habits, you're gonna go right back to where you were before. It, it, it's just inevitable. That's what happens with all these weight loss programs is people don't change their lifestyle. They don't change it to a nutritional diet or a program that they can stay on for the rest of their life. And that's why they yo-yo. They go right back and gain that weight back. Another thing that happens when you are on a restrictive calorie diet for an extended period of time, it lowers your metabolism. And some patients or some clients, you know, when they go back to eating normal, their metabolism will increase, but some, it never comes back. In the Women's Initiative study, it was for 20 years at 50,000 women, a part of it. What they did is they lowered the calorie intake, 200 calories a day. And what they found at the end of the 20 years is that the average client or patient in the study participant, their metabolic rate had dropped 200 calories and they hadn't lost any weight. In fact, they've actually gained weight. So what does that tell us? Well, restricting your calories for an extended period of time just lowers your metabolism. Uh, and you lose weight while it's dropping, but it, it will eventually get hit a plateau. That's why they, you, there's only so many calories you can cut a day and so much exercise you can do a day and you hit those plateaus and you don't understand why you're not losing weight. Another thing, another study, the biggest loser study, we all seen that TV show, you know, they lost a tremendous amount of weight. Well, what they found after five years is that most of the patients, I think all of them one, don't quote me on that, put all the way back on and some, and they found out that their metabolic rate was 499 points, so 499 calories per day less than it was when they first started. So if you're on a calorie restrictive diet, your metabolic rate can start to drop as quick as two weeks. So when you're on a restricted diet for an extended period of time, your metabolic rate is gonna, is gonna drop and match the amount of calories you're taking in to preserve life, to save itself. It's just a natural thing that happens. And it drops quick, but it recovers very slowly. That's why when people come off, go off these diets where they're restricting their calories, is they put on that weight so quick. It's because their metabolic rate has dropped and it takes a long time to catch up with the amount of calories you're eating. But by then you've already put on weight. And it's just that snowball effect, that yo-yo effect. Well, how can you prevent that from happening? Well, there's a couple things you can do. The best way we believe that this can be done, and it's been proven through research, is to go on a diet that allows your body to become fat adapted, which means your body's burning fat for fuel, puts you into ketosis, 
like a ketogenic diet or a very low carb diet. Uh, and again, you need to talk to your doctors about this. Every patient's different. But if you can be on a diet where your body is fat adapted, which means it's burning, it's burned up all the glucose, and it's burning few, uh, fat for fuel. When you restrict your calories, and I'll just give you an example, let's say you need 2,000 calories a day to maintain your, your body weight, and you drop that down to 1,500. Well, if you're fat adapted, which means you're burning fat for fuel, and you have fat on your body, your metabolic rate will pull those excess calories that's not getting from the food intake from your fat stores. That's why the ketogenic is so great at people losing weight. It's because it burns the fat off the body, uses it to maintain the metabolic rate. So if you're fat adapted, you can lower your restricted calories for a much longer period of time without it affecting your metabolic rate. So when you stop taking the medications, whatever it may be, and you go back to your normal life, your metabolic rate is right where it was when you first started. So you can go to a maintenance level and not gain that excess weight. Obviously also you wanna make lifestyle choice changes. Now, another way that even to have a little extra insurance to protect your metabolic rate is to do what's called calorie shifting. And calorie shifting can work to maintain your metabolic rate, whether you're on a keto diet or a paleo or some other thing, as long as you're eating clean, good, clean food, you can actually maintain your metabolic rate uh, using calorie shifting. And I'll just give an example of what calorie shifting is. Calorie shifting is just where on certain days you have excess calories, certain you have, days you have a deficit. And I'm just gonna give you an example. Every patient's a little different we work with, but here's just an example. Let's say for example, um, you need 2000 calories a day to maintain your, your weight. Uh, well, let's say for example, Monday, Tuesday, we'll restrict your calories down to 1500. On Wednesday, we'll bring them back up to so maybe 2100, which is 100 surplus. On Thursday and Friday, we may drop it back down to 1500. And then on Saturday, Sunday, we may bring it up to 2000. So that's just shifting your calories around. We also, there's other things to take into account, like did I work out that day? Did I not work out? Things like that. But that's just shifting your calories around to give you uh, days that you're in a deficit, so you're losing the weight, and days where you help maintain your metabolic rate. And there's things you can do, like on the days you maintain, you can do maybe, you know, cardio, or like steady state cardio, or you do your weight resistance. But today you don't do anything is when you restrict your calories. So there's ways to work around it, but you've got to have a plan in place. So if you're going to be successful long term in your semaglutide, you've got to have you've got to change your habits up to nutritional habits that you can maintain for a lifetime, and you've got to maintain your metabolic rate during that period. So if you have any questions, any concerns, you, you know, just hit us up, you know, in the comment section, send us a direct mail. Uh, DM, just whatever, but think about it, have a plan in place because you want to use this as a tool, lose that weight, but then have a plan in place to maintain it afterwards. So if you have any questions, just let us know.